Good morning, I'm Don Parker, a test pilot here uh, with the Scorpion program this morning at uh, Paris uh, Air Show and I'll uh, talk to you a little bit about the uh, Scorpion aircraft and the program that started it. Uh, as you can see, or you, I'll be uh, guiding you around the Scorpion aircraft, uh, the initial concept that, uh, that started the Scorpion is uh, between Textron and Airland, a joint venture of uh, two companies. The idea is uh, completely counterintuitive to what uh, uh, normal military um, production and aircraft acquisition would uh, would be from the perspective that it's uh, entirely uh, commercially developed and built. Uh, not a single taxpayer dollar has gone into it. So as opposed to um, a, a military or a department or ministry of defense having a requirement and having that uh, established and then going out to industry and uh, having industry build to that requirement, this is a case of uh, commercial entities showing a vision and an ability to take a look at a niche market and a hole in the marketplace and developing on their own dime a aircraft that fits in that niche market. The development was primarily an ISR, that's Intelligence, Surveillance and Reconnaissance aircraft with the ability of having a kinetic strike. So what you'll see is the aircraft that, uh, that we developed. It's about a 21,000 uh, pound capability uh, for, for weight, uh, flight level 450, well into the flight levels, uh, up to 450 knots true and Mach 0.78. Uh, the ability, most importantly, to carry up to 3,000 pounds in an internal payload that we'll show you in a little, just, a, just a moment. So the, uh, the aircraft will, uh, will start a walk around. Uh, as we go toward uh, the front of the aircraft, something that's uh, very important uh, is the mission. Uh, and that's what the aircraft is, is designed around. The mission, again, is intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance primarily, uh, with the ability to uh, act as, as in a training role as well. So that mission requires significant payloads, payloads that uh, also need to stay on station for long periods of time. So something different from conventional aircraft that would have a pointy nose similar to this one is this one starts out with a lot of empty space. Back uh, underneath the aircraft there is uh, uh, more than 80 cubic feet of empty space that is uh, in completely unstressed areas down down in this area, uh, back of our, our ladder, uh, all the way to the two turrets. Uh, the second turret uh, would be the back end of the area which uh, is empty space and available for payloads. More than 3,000 pounds of uh, payload could be put there. In addition, payloads out on the wings. There's six pylons or hard points on the wings with a full 1760 interface that can be used for whatever a country or customer might want. That's the mission. So as we look around the airplane plane some more, that empty space in the, in the cockpit, or actually in the, uh, in the fuselage, drives the width of the fuselage. The width of the fuselage is uh, wider than what a conventional fighter type aircraft would be. And so uh, that's to accommodate that and very comfortably accommodate a crew for a long period of time, up to a five and a half hour uh, unrefueled endurance capability in order to stay on a station more than 150 miles away. So the other things that uh, enable the aircraft are very conventional parts such as Honeywell TFE 731-40 uh, engines which are uh, a high bap bypass fan that uh, has very low fuel consumption at the low and even at the high speeds, low and high altitudes that we might be flying with the aircraft. So unrefueled and without external fuel you have the capacity to stay airborne very long.
The other things that uh, drive uh, uh, our are part of that mission in order to meet the mission set are a straight wing. Uh, we want the capacity of being able to get to and from a uh, target area or a, a uh, sensor area very uh, reasonably quickly at jet speeds, something faster than uh, what a turboprop might be, um, but uh, it doesn't have to be su supersonic. That keeps our costs down. That drives an essentially a straight wing that sits on the aircraft, uh, conventional for uh, many of the Cessna designs. Much of the engineering, the DNA between, behind the aircraft is Cessna Engineering, uh, which is uh, a company that has the, uh, uh, between Cessna and Beechcraft, the single largest um, business jet fleet throughout the world. We've got a pretty good idea on how to build airplanes with excellent flying qualities. So along those lines, with the straight wing, you've got large, uh, large flaps to be able to slow down uh, on speed and ailerons, which are uh, uh, in the lateral control powered conventional uh, ailerons, uh, so they're uh, powered with uh, hydraulically and uh, use uh, parts that are essentially off of our, uh, our Citation 10. Uh, again, part of the logistics behind the aircraft is that we use common commercial parts that are available in many of our business jets or other business jets around the world. What you'll see on the aircraft right now is a number of stores that are uh, uh, that could be incorporated into the aircraft at uh, a customer request. As you move further aft, you can take a look at the landing gear. The landing gear and the wheels are conventional uh, system for a, a fighter type aircraft that stows the uh, the landing gear up into the fuselage. Wheels come off of the uh, and brake systems come off of the uh, essentially are half of what a uh, Citation 10 would be. And we have the ability to, uh, to put others on if, if uh, at customer request. Moving further aft, this particular airplane uses a, a conventional horizontal stabilizer with, uh, with an elevator. Again, similar to our Citation 10 because of the envelope of the aircraft, it, uh, it uses uh, powered flight controls. Both axes, because of the genesis or the basis, the DNA of those, uh, those airplanes are Part 25 certified, is they also have a manual backup in the event of some sort of a failure. Some, uh, uh, something that you would not traditionally find in, uh, in most uh, fighter type uh, aircraft. Both the wing, the horizontal tail, and the leading edge of the uh, engine intakes are, all have heated, uh, heated surfaces. They are uh, anti-ice protected with bleed air from the engines. Another thing that is not conventional for fighter type aircraft, but very, very useful. As we step further around the back of the aircraft, you'll notice the uh, canted vertical tails uh, that provides plenty of directional stability for the aircraft at uh, all of its uh, angles of attack at which it might fly low and high. Conventional unpowered rudders that are uh, uh, fly-by-wire, which is to say cables between the uh, pilot's, uh, pilot's legs and uh, bell cranks, pulleys, and so forth to the uh, flight controls for the, directional, uh, for the directional control of the aircraft. Looking at the uh, very back of the aircraft is a great opportunity to see just how much space lies between the engines and uh, along the belly. We have uh, two 15-inch turrets sitting on the aircraft right now, which uh, actually occupy a very small portion of the space which is available. It has the capacity to accept as much as a 25-inch turret in, uh, in, in the bay. So uh, again, conventional uh, low uh, low uh, fuel consumption engines uh, that are deployed in many, many business jets and even some trainers around the world with the Honeywell TFE 731s. Um, 
Moving further around the aircraft, we start to get to uh, the, the other side, and you can actually see on the horizontal tail an area that uh, something unique to a, a pointy nose or fighter type aircraft is, uh, is the exhaust for, uh, uh, for bleed air. So we have, uh, in spite of the fact that uh, you, don't, you don't see the, the smooth leading edge, those leading edges on both the tail and the wing are heated. And uh, we've used, uh, used the anti-ice uh, quite a few times, particularly crossing the Atlantic, where it's uh, fairly common to pick up ice. Something that's uh, a great benefit for uh, subsonic uh, aircraft, regardless whether they're rotary wing or uh, uh, fighter or, or business jet type airplanes. As we uh, continue to move forward, we'll, uh, we'll get closer to the cockpit. We've got a uh, conventional, uh, conventional cockpit that is a tandem style, full set of uh, flight controls, both forward and aft. We uh, elected to go with a uh, convention that uh, primarily would have the uh, lead pilot, uh, the pilot in the forward cockpit flying, and the uh, pilot in the rear cockpit uh, has the capacity to fly, do everything the uh, pilot in the forward cockpit can do, save for a couple of emergency activities, emergency extension of the landing gear and brakes. Um, but he also has the ability to take and run the mission system. We've incorporated a mission system from uh, Forsex that uh, uh, also controls uh, any of the uh, turrets that we might put on the aircraft and uh, a fully integrated system uh, that way that uh, is displayed to the rear cockpit occupant on a uh, large 15 inch, uh, right now, an Avalex display. So uh, also in the rear cockpit is a full uh, uh, HOTAS hand controller system that runs all of that. And uh, it's a Windows-based system, so it's uh, very easy and agile, uh, convenient to be able to make changes and uh, uh, put new capacities and capabilities on at, uh, at any time that uh, you may want to. It's also very modular, uh, enabling us to put uh, other types of, other types of uh, uh, pods on. So customers will often want to switch or have some uh, a unique configuration for their particular aircraft and we can service that need very easily. In the cockpit is conventional avionics provided by Genesis Aerosys. It's a uh, dual FMS GPS guidance that has uh, uh, all of the latest capacity that you would expect in any experimental or even uh, light certified aircraft to include uh, TAWS, TCAS, and uh, uh, synthetic vision. Uh, there's uh, up forward, there's uh, two 6x8 displays and a 4x5 display that are all integrated with uh, two 4 by five displays in the rear cockpit that enables uh, us to have uh, full vision of all of our uh, engine ind indications, uh, any uh, malfunctions, as well as uh, complete uh, complete navigation capability uh, on uh, four separate displays. So. Uh, the aircraft also has uh, the ability uh, in conventional, uh, as in conventional uh, fighter type aircraft, to be able to egress very simply and easily uh, should the uh, need arise uh, through Martin Baker uh, ejection seats that are sequenced to be able to uh, put the rear occupant out first or as you might like. Uh, conventional with uh, many of the trainers, uh, tandem trainers today. So. Uh, one of the uh, really neat uh, uh, features of the aircraft, uh, can, different from most of the fighters that uh, many of us have climbed into, is uh, the ease and use of a ladder. That is uh, probably the finest ladder I've uh, had the opportunity to get in and out of an aircraft on. It's, uh, it's actually uh, really easy to uh, enter an egress. Uh, again, the, the philosophy of the aircraft is uh, by and large uh, one of using off the shelf uh, not only components but our systems. Systems, uh, I talked about flight controls a bit, but uh, things like our environmental control system largely pulled out of uh, other Citation aircraft uh, and uh, it uses a vapor cycle system for, uh, for cooling. So there's a conventional, uh, similar to an automobile style uh, air conditioner. 
There's uh, also uh, the electrical system is uh, essentially out of one of our, our CJs. So we've got a two battery system, completely independent start capability. Uh, no ground power support is, uh, is required, similar to what you would find in a, uh, 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 one of our business jets. So uh, uh, we've talked about flight controls, electrics, hydraulics uh, are necessary obviously to drive uh, uh, our flight controls as well as uh, landing gear, extension, retraction, there's a speed brake uh, on the back of the aircraft. It's a very, very slick aircraft, very smooth, uh, it takes very little power to keep it going and as such, uh, uh, in order to, uh, to come down, it's helpful to have a speed brake uh, when, you, uh, when you need to come down. Hydraulics are, are driven, are what drive those and, and power them. Uh, we have hydraulics on both engines and uh, the production aircraft will have a uh, uh, power transfer unit that enables uh, hydraulics going from either side in order to be able to uh, power those systems even in the event of a uh, hydraulic or engine failure. The missions that uh, the aircraft is uh, designed to support is primarily intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance. Uh, it could be used used in any number of uh, areas, uh, maritime uh, support, border security, um, uh, also light strike, and even training. So it's a highly versatile aircraft that uh, uh, the design enables uh, any number of missions and uh, they are configurable to that which a customer may want. Can you tell us something about the, the, how... The uh, next piece for this aircraft is, uh, this is our concept demonstrator. Uh, again, the company took the risk to be able to go out and uh, see a market niche that uh, uh, that there's, uh, we, th we think there's a tremendous market for a capability of providing security at a much lower cost. Uh, many of the hours of uh, the fighters of uh, aircraft around the world over the last three decades have been spent uh, doing uh, missions that are far beneath their capacity. Uh, they're still doing the missions and they're using those fighters up at a tremendous cost to the taxpayers. We think that those missions could be done less expensively. So the company came up with the idea that we'll, uh, uh, we will do something different than the traditional acquisition for uh, defense departments and militaries around the world by doing the same thing that we do for any of our business jets or like aircraft, and that is seeing a hole in the market, a niche where we could build something that uh, could easily be used, and offering that as a proposal to governments and departments of uh, defense around the world. So. By doing that, that essentially means that uh, we can do things much, much quicker and much less expensively uh, since it's all controlled uh, essentially within the company. We make the design decisions, uh, we make, uh, and those design decisions don't take a matter of weeks, they take a matter of hours. Uh, that allows us to be very agile and responsive uh, to the customer, which in the case of this particular aircraft essentially was, uh, was us because we needed an aircraft that can go out and show the world what we can do with the airplane. Now as it turns out, uh, we have done a tremendous amount of learning on this aircraft and we are right now as we speak uh, constructing the next one which is going to have uh, minor changes to the outer mold line and some changes to the uh, interior of the aircraft uh, which is to say the systems um, but it's in uh, construction right now and we expect to fly that airplane by this time next year. So uh, that will be the fully uh, the first fully conforming aircraft in which we should be able to expect to conduct certification activity with the airplane to certification authorities that we determine are uh, appropriate. It's, it's actually a great story. Uh, there's a, a wonderful brief that our chief engineer and uh, chief pilot give that uh, is uh, literally entitled 23 months cocktail napkin to flying asset. So uh, by today's standards that is uh, at lightning speed. It's extremely fast. Uh, literally uh, on uh, January of uh, I believe it was 20, 2012 there was a small handful of individuals uh, sitting in a room with a great idea and and uh, by May of that, that year, the design was frozen and uh, 
by uh, December of 2013, the, uh, the aircraft flew a first flight. So uh, a tremendous effort uh, in order to be able to execute a first flight and then continue development on the aircraft for now the next year and a half since that, since that time frame. So, uh, along those lines, you can, uh, you can expect that uh, uh, you make a number of design decisions in order to meet those, uh, those kinds of schedule constraints. Uh, those design decisions essentially uh, drive us to even use more, to a greater extent, commercial off-the-shelf parts, uh, which ultimately ends up bringing the cost of the aircraft down. So, uh, things that are all commercially available, either on one of uh, one of our citations or somewhere in a, uh, a parts system amongst uh, the multitude of uh, business jets around the world.